Hello world, this is Ankit Ji from Cordillar Technologies Bengaluru. In today's recipe, we are going to see how to create a simple offline payment gateway in Magento 2 with some scenarios. So to know how these scenarios work and to see the examples, let's hop into the presentation. Let's hop into the presentation. I guess you may be having a confusion between a payment gateway and a payment method. Basically, payment plays a vital role for the merchants as well as the customers regardless of any e-commerce platform it can be. For example, if I am a customer, I would prefer cash on delivery if it's any random e-commerce website and if it's a trustworthy e-commerce website, I would prefer UPI as I feel that UPI are very safe and easy to pay. And there are some exception cases, that is, if it's a month end, in that case, I would prefer pay later as many of the e-commerce platform do provide pay later feature based on some particular conditions. So in this scenario, cash on delivery, UPI, pay later are the payment methods. These are provided by the payment gateways such as PayPal, Stripe, Relay and many more. The payment methods are divided into two types that is online and offline. The payment methods which are proceeded online the network are called online payment methods such as UPI card and the payment methods which are proceeded offline the network are called offline payment methods such as check, cash on delivery and pay later in some situations. For now, let's create an offline payment method with some scenario and integrate it with Magento. In order to create an offline payment gateway in Magento 2, we need to have some basic prerequisites such as module creation, model, layout, knockout.js with some basic idea how it works. In this video, we are going to learn how we can create a payment method with payment.xml, a backend configuration with default configuration required, a model for managing the payment gateway and the use of checkout component in checkout page. In the payment.xml, we are going to have a payment tag which consists of groups and method. So the group represents online or offline payment and the method represents what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed in the particular payment method. Next is the config.xml which has the default config data for a system configuration. Here we can see a system.xml which has a tag such as section, group, label, field, source model, front-end model, back-end model and the comment. So as the name itself represents the purpose of what it can do. So the section can have a different section or merged with the existing section of any configuration and the same applies for group, field as well as label. So it can get merged if the duplicate data is present. And the source model represents the source for the particular field. For example, it can be a multi-select or a select or anything. So the data can come from the particular source model, which will be a class. And the same applies for the front-end model, back-end model as well. Next is the configuration setting. A simple class which manages the configuration required for the payment gateway and which can also have the configuration such as enabled or disabled of the module or the payment gateway and as well as the uh, enable status for the particular store or disabled for the particular store. Next is the checkout component which is a very important unit in the payment module I am going to build. The checkout in Magento 2 is built with a series of knockout component which is rendered using knockout.js template system. Here we can see a checkout layout which consists of checkout steps, shipping steps as well as the payment steps in a hierarchical manner. Here we have assigned a knockout.js component which can render a knockout.js template inside it. Here we can see an example of knockout.js component which uses render list to push another knockout.js component inside it. So now that we are familiar with theory, let's create something in practical. 
Let's start with creating a payment method called pay later without using any deprecated functionality. So the reason I use the deprecated keyword specifically because all the blogs and the videos which I saw a couple of months ago gave me no choice but to use the class called abstract method. So in this session let's learn to make a simple payment method then inject the payment method via dependency injection render the payment method on the front end and create a checkout config to manage the checkout component on the front end. Here I have created a simple module called Codilar Pay Later. So if you don't know how to create a simple module, just go to the Codilar blog and refer how you can create a simple module. So here we can see that we have a module.xml and a composer.json and a registration.php. Now that we have the module ready, let's create a backend configuration for the payment method we are creating. So in the section called payment, we need to add the payment method called Cordillard Pay Later with couple of configuration such as enable status, title and many more. Now let's create a one-time configuration for the Cordillard Pay Later payment method. So for the one-time configuration, we may require the config.xml to be created in the etc folder which consists of the configurations such as active status, model, can checkout, can, check, can cancel, can refund and many configuration like this. So as we have added the model called paylater facade in our config.xml, in order to the payment method called Cordillard Pay Later to work, we need to create that Pay Later facade. So let's create a da.xml inside which we can use virtual type tag in order to create a model. So basically it has five parameters called code, form block type, info block type, value handler pool and validator pool. As it's taking too much of time, let me make it faster and explain the code at the end. Now I have created all the files which are required for the payment method to run. So the payment.xml here which is used for registering the payment method in Magento 2. The di.xml in the frontend directory of etc is created for adding the configuration of payment method pay later in checkout config which is linked with a class called settings in the model config consisting of all the configuration of the payment method. Next, the layout file that is checkout index index.xml for adding the JS component in the checkout page. Within the JS component, eventually I have called the knockout template which is in the view frontend web template directory. Now that we are done with the development, let's see our payment method in action. First, let's check the backend configuration. So here I can see the general configuration for the payment method. In the front end, when I enter the checkout page, here in the payment section, I am not able to see the pay later payment method because to be precise, I have added one more condition that is the pay later is only available for the logged in customers and in the checkout config, I can see that the enable status is false. Let me just log in and check the flow once again. So now that I am logged in, here in the checkout config, now I can see that the enable status is true and even the payment method has been enabled. Thank you for watching the video and if you have any questions you can just drop in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe the channel.